Hello. So why Dawkins won't debate Craig? Let us continue with reviewing the elements of Craig's Christian philosophy with which he is trying to resolve the ancient, always existing, paradoxes, inconsistencies in the image of God in Christian philosophy. God is presented as the absolute. He doesn't have any limits. He is the whole. He doesn't have any parts. He is changeless. Although the decision to create a world, that is a change, he is timeless because in time there is always change. But such a God who is timeless and cannot interact with and control the creatures he has created is more of a deistic God. Craig doesn't want that. So he places God in time since the moment of creation. And that in some mysterious way God existed not before time, that would be a, a self-contradiction, but he existed in some way beyond time. And so the way I would put it is this, is that God is timeless without creation, and he is temporal since the moment of creation. So the decision to create on God's part is a decision to enter into time, to take on a temporal mode of existence in order to relate to his creatures. It is essential to God to be eternal, and by that we mean he is without beginning or end. He neither came into existence nor will he go out of existence. So everyone can agree that God is eternal. But the question is, is he eternal in the sense of being through, existing throughout infinite time, or is he eternal in the sense of just being timeless and therefore having no beginning or end? And what I want to suggest is that God's mode of existence is a contingent property of God dependent upon his will. If God chooses to remain changeless and alone and never create, then he will exist timelessly. But if he chooses to create a world, then he will exist temporally. So I think that it makes sense to say that God is eternal in the sense of having neither beginning nor end. He is permanent. Nobody argues that one. Right. So that is an essential property of God. But it's up to God whether or not he exists timelessly and eternally or temporally so can and he... eternally. If God is in time, where is he? Because if God is in time, he is in space. Time is only a dimension in the space-time continuum. If God is in time, he is in space, but not in general space, because there is no simultaneity. He is at a point in space. Where is he? So for example, suppose God knows at one moment it's three o'clock. He knows it's three o'clock? Where? Here it is three o'clock. In the United States, it's nine o'clock. In Eastern Europe, it's four o'clock. He's got here somewhere? Moment it's three o'clock, and at the next moment he knows it's 301. I don't think that changes any improvement in God whatsoever, nor does it show that God was imperfect when he knew it was 3 o'clock instead of 301. On the contrary, it's a mark of his perfection that he always knows accurately what time it is. But by placing God in time, Greg has dug a trap for himself in which he will fall because when God enters time by creating the world, he cannot go out of time, he cannot become timeless again because it will always make sense to say that even if he discontinues this creation, annihilates it, it will always make sense to say that he did create the world, he did annihilate it, and so on. So he is always, he will be eternally in time. But it's up to God whether or not he exists timelessly and eternally, or temporally so can and he, eternally. So can he change his mind and go back? Now that's a really <laughs> profound question. Could God say annihilate the universe and annihilate the world and resume a state of timelessness? I don't think so. 
And the reason is that, that he doesn't want to, or it's impossible. That it would be impossible. You think it's impossible for I, God I, I to do that? I think so, because I think that, given the nature of time, that if God were to annihilate the world, it would always make sense to say that, there that was. God did, yeah. the world did exist. He did annihilate it. There, and, and he no longer exists with a world. So once time comes into being, that fact is always a temporal fact, even if God annihilates everything and goes back to a state of changelessness. So that was a big Do you remember, because Craig needs the universe to have a beginning, he states the philosophical argument that past, the number of the past events can't reach infinity because that leads to a contradiction. But there are good reasons, both philosophically and scientifically, to think that the universe began to exist. Philosophically, the idea of an infinite past seems absurd. Just think about it. If the universe never began to exist, that means that the number of past events in the history of the universe is infinite. But mathematicians recognize that the existence of an actually infinite number of things leads to self-contradictions. We can say the same thing about the future. The number of future events will reach infinity and that will lead to a paradox. So that type of God also can't exist. That is my take on the matter. Moment it's three o'clock and at the next moment he knows it's 3.01. I don't think that changes any improvement in God whatsoever, nor does it show that God was imperfect when he knew it was 3 o'clock instead of 3.01. On the contrary, it's a mark of his perfection that he always knows accurately what time it is.